Do you know that one of the important reasons most organizations are not able to be fully data-driven is that a major portion of data generated today is unstructured? Data in the form of videos, images, documents remain untapped by organizations. And one of the goals for Google Cloud is to help organizations realize value from data of all formats and types. I'm Abhirami Sukumaran, Developer Advocate, Google, and today I'll demonstrate how we can store and process image data with BigQuery. Late last year, we announced the preview of this capability that is to be able to store unstructured data in BigQuery and perform analytics and ML directly on this data using BQML with existing frameworks like SQL and remote functions. In this session today, we'll see a quick demo of this feature. So what's unique about processing unstructured data with BigQuery, you ask? You can store unstructured data in object tables, just like you would with regular tabular data. Perform analytics and ML on this data only using SQL queries. Unify structured and unstructured data at scale and query them together. There are five steps in achieving image data classification with BigQuery ML. Create dataset and big league connection. Create a cloud storage bucket and grant permissions. Create an object table. Create model and upload to Google Cloud Storage. Load the model into BQML and start inferring. Let's start the demo. Log into Google Cloud Console and in the search bar, type in BigQuery. If you haven't already enabled the API, you would be prompted to do so. Once that is done, you should be able to see the Explorer pane on the left side and the query editor on the right in the BigQuery console. The first step is to create dataset. For that, start typing in the query, create schema, project ID, dot dataset name. In this case, I've chosen yoga underscore set underscore IO as a dataset name. For this demo, I've already created this. Once this is created, you should be able to navigate to the created dataset and take a look at the configuration. Moving on to the next step, create connection. This is the big lake connection we'd be creating. For this, click on the add icon on top of the Explorer pane. From the list of popular sources, select connections to external data sources. Select connection type as big lake and remote functions cloud resource. Provide a connection ID. Make sure the region that you choose here in location type is same as the one that you've created for BigQuery dataset and create connection. Once the connection is created, you should be able to see that from the list available here. Make a note of the service account ID for the Big Lake connection that is just created. Next step is to create Google Cloud Storage bucket, upload the images and grant permissions. For this, go to Google Cloud Console and on the search bar, type Google Cloud Storage or Cloud Storage. Once you select that, you should be able to see the buckets page with the list of already created buckets if you have any. You can choose to create a new bucket for this use case. Provide the name of the bucket and select the region. Make sure it is the same region that you have chosen for the BigQuery dataset and the Big Lake connection. We leave the rest of the options set to default values for now and hit create. I've already created the bucket that's required for the demo and I've uploaded the images. For this demo, we have chosen the use case of recognizing yoga poses. So I have taken a few yoga poses images that are available publicly and I've uploaded those folders into the yoga underscore images bucket that I had created in Google Cloud Storage. Once you create the bucket, uploading the files into the bucket is fairly straightforward. You see the upload files and upload folder options right here on the yoga images bucket. Click that and upload the files into this bucket. Once everything is done, go to the configuration page of cloud storage bucket that you've just created and make sure you copy the GSUtil URI because this is the URL that we'll be using in our SQL to reference this Google Cloud Storage bucket. And now let's grant permissions to the service account so BigQuery can access the images stored in Cloud Storage bucket. 
For this, I'm going to copy these two commands and run it in Cloud Shell Terminal. Replace the service account placeholder and the GSUtil URI of the Cloud Storage Bucket placeholder. Let's run the two commands from Cloud Shell Terminal. Authorize. And we should be all set to move on to the next step, which is creating an external object table. The external object table is the table in BigQuery that will contain the images that we currently have stored in Cloud Storage Bucket. For this, we will use the create or replace external table query. Create or replace external table dataset ID dot table name of your choice. In this case, I've chosen yoga underscore poses underscore IEO with connection, connection name for the big lake connection we just created. Options, object metadata remains simple and URIs, paste the GSUtil URL of the cloud storage bucket that we created. I've already ran this query. The table is created. Once the table is created, you will be able to navigate to the table and look at the schema. Now that the table is created, let's quickly query this table. The data field contains the reference to the image. And you can see other fields, URI, content type, updated, and other metadata fields. You can also notice that I've limited the result set to one and I've chosen an image from the blank folder. Now let's quickly visualize the result that we obtained in an image format. To do that, you can export this result into a local CSV file. Open the Collab notebook. Upload the CSV that we have just exported from the query editor in BigQuery and run the small snippet. This step is totally optional and there are several ways to do it. You can also programmatically achieve this using your favorite programming language. Now that we've created the external table and stored images in BigQuery, the next step is to create the model and upload it in Google Cloud Storage. For this implementation, I'm going to use an existing pre-trained model. You can use a pre-trained model or create your own model and upload it in TensorFlow Hub and it should unpackage into saved underscore model.pb and a variables folder in your local. Upload the saved underscore model.pb file and the variables folder into the same bucket in cloud storage where we have already stored our images. That's it. Now we can load that model into BigQuery ML and start predicting. For this, we are going to use the create model query, create model dataset name dot model name of your choice. In this case, it's ResNet underscore IO. Options, model type remains TensorFlow and model path is your GSUtil URI path of the cloud storage bucket that we've created. Run this. In this case, I've already created the model. Once the model is created, you should be able to navigate to the model and take a look at the configuration details. Click schema tab and you should be able to see two sections, labels and features. Labels section contains activation underscore 49 field. It contains a batch of vectors that represents the likelihood that a specific image belongs to a particular category. Input underscore one is the independent variable or the input that we will be passing to the prediction query in order to deliver the target result. All right, now it's time to use the model that we've created to start predicting. For this, we are going to use the ml.predict SQL. Select star from ml.predict, provide the model name in the parameter and the subquery that represents the image for which you want to do the prediction. In this case, the yoga pose that you want to label. Let's run the query. When the query execution is complete, you can see that the result set has activation underscore 49, which is the prediction variable result and input underscore one. This result is highly nested so I've written a simple flatten query to translate this into a more relatable format or structure. That way I'll have the label in the form of an index or in the form of actual yoga post name. Let's run this query. There you go. We have now obtained a flattened version of the same result we got in the prediction query. 
In this case, the image 1.jpg that I've passed in as input for prediction is identified as downward dog. To validate this, go ahead and export the result to a local CSV file and go back to the same Collab notebook where you have the Python snippet and pass in the CSV that you have just exported. And you can see that the post that we have passed in for prediction is actually downward dog post. Now that we've created the model, loaded the model in BigQuery ML and predicted using the model that we've just created, the last step here is my favorite part, which is unifying structured and unstructured data and querying them together. In order to do this, I have already created yoga underscore health structure table in preparation for this demo. This is a simple uh, structured relational table, which has four fields. So I'm just going to execute this select query that combines unstructured data and structured data and run it from BigQuery editor. And there it is. We have successfully unified structured and unstructured data. As you can see, post, health, benefit, breadth, focus are all from the relational table and data field is from the unstructured external table in BigQuery. Congratulations, we have successfully stored, queried, and classified unstructured data with BigQuery, only using SQL, and also unified structured and unstructured data in a single query as if they coexisted. Try out SQL only ML with BigQuery to begin with and come up with innovative solutions for your organization. Become a Google Cloud innovator and innovator champion today. Read about it in the description. <music>